we've just watched City Hunter. Um, just before we dive into the film, actually, this is quite an interesting edition put out by uh, Eureka. And I don't think it's uh, it's not a Masters of Cinema one, I don't think. But uh, it's uh, it's a good edition. Uh, loads of special features, really good restoration of the film for, for those of you out there that, uh, that collect that sort of thing. So, City Hunter is um, an adaptation of a Japanese comic. Is it a Japanese comic? And uh, It's a manga series, excuse me. So it's a Japanese manga series. Um, obviously, Jackie Chan uh, starring as the uh, titular hero, City Hunter. basic premise of the film is that um, Jackie Chan is tasked with locating a, um, a billionaire's daughter who's basically run away. Uh, they track her to a cruise ship, and uh, there's uh, just happens to be terrorists on the cruise ship, and so the sort of the plot sort of goes on from there. He ends up obviously finding the girl. There's a bit of a love triangle, um, as, as there always is in these things. He takes on and wins the terrorists, and um, and yeah, the whole thing's really just played for laughs. I'm not familiar with the source material at all, so I don't know how faithful or unfaithful it is to it. Um, but yeah, it, it, the whole thing. But we both said that we we found this one quite weird and and off putting, and found the comedy a little bit too much in this one. Um, mm. Obviously, that the film is made to to look like a cartoon. Um, you know, in the in the way that they act and sort of you know they they do things like there's a scene at one point where Jackie Chan's character cries, and so they give him silly sort of like cartoon tears, and he's like that, and just. Silly things like that, and everything's exaggerated. And like the final shot in the movie is Jackie Chan's sort of. Um, I suppose she's his girlfriend by that point, hitting him with a giant hammer because he's flirting with another woman, and you know it's that that sort of thing. And every, everything's just over exaggerated. Um, not really my cup of tea. I uh, want this one. I, I probably won't be uh, sort of going back to it with any. Uh, any sort of haste anyway but that's not to say I can't appreciate its merits it's well shot, it is well acted uh, again the stunt work and the choreography with that is, is fantastic Jackie Chan doing a great job with that. Laura what, what did you think? Uh, <laughs> um, honestly I, I, comedy, comedy value yeah I liked it, it had its silly little gimmicks and silly little hijinks in it and you can tell they've really gone for the comic book kind of, <laughs> kind of style to it so yeah, it feels like a comic yeah. book, um, you know, a comic strip or a manga or something yeah. like that brought to life. I think if we were watching this just on its own, I think it, I'd like it a bit more, I think. It's just with all the other films we've got compared to them, it's... Uh, <laughs> do you know what I mean? I just wouldn't rate it. Yeah, do you know, I don't think if I was watching this on its own, I'd rate it anymore, to be fair. I can appreciate what's gone into it. This is actually quite a nice edition of this um, this film. Um but yeah, I don't know, it's just, just not my, my cup of tea. I've heard other people review it and say it's not your typical Jackie Chan performance. And and I'd be, be inclined to agree, it's mm. it's not, not what I was expecting. But, um, like I say, there, there were bits of it that I uh, I enjoyed. I enjoyed the relationship between Jackie Chan and his, uh, like I say, she's his uh, girlfriend by the end of it. She's the sister of his best friend who dies in the opening, opening sequence and he sort of vows to protect her and that he won't fall for her and then of course he falls for her. Um, as well, I thought that the the terrorists were played. Uh, obviously, so the whole thing's played for laughs. I thought that they they were quite funny. And there's a scene where Jackie Chan's fighting the lead terrorist McDonald, and the sort of he's got these sort of sticks that can turn into whips. And then Jackie Chan's got a couple of police batons, and they're they're going for it, sort of thing. There's a silly bit, little bit in the middle where he gets electrocuted, and suddenly the whole fight scene turns into a scene from Street Fighter as well, which I thought was quite silly as well. Yeah, they're in this thing, and then they get turned into the video game characters. That that was um, that that was quite entertaining. Yeah, was quite I don't know. On on the whole, I didn't enjoy this as much as I wanted to, and uh, and that, that's a shame. I'm going to give it a five out of ten. Yeah, same here. Well, there you go. Yeah. Well, I don't know what we're going to be watching next. Um, we're we're just picking these as we as we go. Uh, we said we're going to do the police story uh, films that we've picked. So that's one and three. So police mm-hmm. story and super cop. Uh, we're going to do them back to back later on this evening so we'll probably get something else in now before we watch those two um, so we'll see you um, next for whatever we watch 
So we have just finished Project A, which is in this box set uh, that's got a few classic 80s um, and probably late 70s uh, Jackie Chan films yeah. in it. Um, so, Project A, we uh, we see Jackie Chan playing Dragon. He is a Hong Kong Coast Guard. Uh, at the start of the film, there's not enough money to go around to keep supporting the paying the Coast Guards, so they are disbanded and sent to join the police force. Um, Obviously, you know, there's there's all sorts of bits and bobs that sort of ensue from there. There are gangsters around that are looking to trade in guns that are part of a pirate ring that's been terrorising the harbours and the uh, and the shores of the town that this is set in. Um, the pirates kidnap a uh, a wealthy British family that's sailing into uh, into the port, and uh, and this ultimately leads to the coast guard being reinstated. Jackie Chan and his um, you know his fellow coast guard soldiers um you know sort of infiltrate the pirates lair and uh, sort of save the day that's pretty much the plot of the film really um this this one's obviously one of the ones that uh, Jackie Chan did uh, in the early 80s and uh, in the wake of doing Cannonball Run and it's um it's, this is a good little action film uh, I, I quite like the comedy in this. I like the interplay between the cast and the characters. Again, it's got the fantastic Sammo Hung in it, another uh, brilliant martial artist who obviously does his own films and quite often um, collaborated with Jackie Chan at this this sort of time in their their respective careers. Mm -hmm. um, this film's famous for uh, having a, an absolute death-defying stunt, isn't it, Laura? Yeah, um, this is what I like about this film: is it's another one of his amazing stunts. This time, he's hanging from a clock face uh, about. Oh, over 40 feet in the air really really high up in the air he's got no safety harness no crash mat or anything like that because yeah it's Jackie Chan who, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and he has to fall from the clock face and the only thing that's there to break his fall is two awnings and neither of them help and he ends up landing straight on his neck as well <laughs> I think he got like a he got a concussion he got a spinal injury and a neck injury from that and you can tell he's in pain because yes. they literally they lift him up afterwards and they drag him away and he's just his necks back his eyes are closed oh. it's oh you can Absolutely. tell he's in pain and in true jackie chan style he does it two more times and each time is even worse There's well one. i think i think probably the one that's in because the, they show in the film they show two takes yeah and you can tell that they're ever so slightly different mm. uh in the landing um and i think it's possibly the third take that he he hurts himself and had to take a break because they, yeah. they show it from two different angles in the in the film, uh, this this box set is one that I imported from. Uh, I think it's from Denmark, uh, possibly Germany. I can't remember. Um, if anybody knows, uh, let me know. But I got it on Amazon UK. It was about twenty quid. It's got ba uh, Battle Creek Brawl, Project A, Wheels on Meals, Police Story, Armor of God, Project A Two, Police Story Two, and Armor of God Two. So I picked this up for the Project A series, as uh, as well as a few of the others in there. I've got the Police Story ones on the. Um, Eureka um, Masters of Cinema I think it's a Masters of Cinema release it's a Eureka release anyway mm. um, so uh, I've got that that's that's enough about that and I, I liked the I, again I like the stunt work in this I like the um, the choreography of it all uh, I liked the sort of you know you were saying it was inspired sort of like by like Buster Keaton and mm. sort of a bit like uh, you know the, that sort of like 1920s and 30s mm. sort Jackie of Chan like did get a lot of inspiration from him for quite a few of his stunts yeah. as well but you can tell sort of like he's taking inspiration from sort of other things from that sort of era as well sort of some of like the the you know the the chase scenes where there's the the police captain that keeps wanting to arrest Jackie Chan's yeah. sergeant and, and and have him have him locked up sort of thing and there's a scene where they're sort of going through the town and it's that sort of bit of a bit of a chase between them but it's a comedic chase yeah. and it's sort of all played for laughs you know and he's shimmying up a a, a flagpole, flagpole at one flagpole, uh, you know yeah. while he's handcuffed to it and things like that and there's one scene where he runs sort of almost vertical sort of almost vertically up a wall to rescue this woman as well and it's like he's anti-gravity yeah, I couldn't absolutely. have done that they're, they're, in a, they're in a cycle chase at one point and he, um, as he cycles past the door he knocks on it so that uh, when the, the chap who's chasing him comes by the guy opens the door straight into him mm. and things like that it, it was a good little film. Um, second time I've uh, I've seen it. Uh, this time we we put this on, didn't we? I say second time I've seen it. We tried watching this and got to the bit where the the pirates take over the um, 
the, the British family and take them take them captive. But we, we put it on far too late at night. Yeah, I think we were very tired. And uh, <laughs> it was just one of them that ne- you know needed paying attention to, and uh, we didn't see it through. Yeah. But I'm I'm glad that we've watched it through. I rated it a lot more this time. Yeah, I I did as well. I enjoyed it. I think I'm going to give it a six out of ten. I'm going to give it a six and a half. There we go. So this evening's going to conclude. We are going to carry on tomorrow as well. It's Easter weekend, if I've not already made uh, mention of it. Um, and obviously, even though we are already in lockdown here in the UK, it's a bank holiday weekend anyway. So long before, um, yeah, long long before all, all this happened in the world, we uh, we were planning to do this this mm-hmm. weekend anyway. But uh, we're going to do two more films tonight, and then we've got uh, two more films definitely in plan tomorrow. Um, possibly three or four, um, if if we feel you know up to it. There's obviously there's still the laundry and all the the boring bits and stuff to do. But this evening we're going to round it out with uh, Laura's favourite police story movie and my favourite police story movie. So that's police story one for Laura, followed by police story three, Super Cop for me. And mm-hmm. um, we'll see you after that. So, we have just watched Police Story, a fantastic film from Jackie Chan, and again, an absolutely fantastic edition of the film from Eureka Home Entertainment there. Uh, I might do uh, an in-depth video on, on this set, actually, because it's, uh, it's a good little set. Anyway, um, the basic premise of the, the film is that uh, Jackie Chan plays a sergeant with the Hong Kong police. The film opens up, and they are wanting to arrest a businessman uh, who's been doing some corrupt dealings, and there's a, a whole sting operation set up to catch him. It doesn't quite quite go to plan but they do catch the guy and get him arrested. They take his secretary into protective custody and assign Jackie Chan the mission of protecting her and ultimately convincing her that it's the right thing to do to turn witness for the crown. Uh, he initially does this um, but she changes her mind and sabotages the evidence uh, so that there isn't a case against her old boss, returns to the boss and of course he double crosses her. Um, Jackie Chan gets taken off the case um, after the, the evidence is sabotaged uh, and basically has to earn everybody's trust back again and and bring the uh, bring the corrupt businessman to justice that's that's the plot of the uh, the film in a in a nutshell um this is another perfect example of Jackie Chan. I think he directed this one as well. He's mm. directed a lot of these that we've watched. I'm not actually mentioned that, but you know, obviously he's, he's directed it. He's had, uh, I think, he's had a hand in writing this, and obviously starring in it as the the lead as well. He sung the theme tune. You know, he's uh, wrote the theme tune, uh, <laughs> played the theme tune, yeah. starred in it as well. Um, a little Britain joke there for anybody who uh, who might have got that, but. Um, but yeah, he's a really multi-talented bloke. The the stunts again choreographed to perfection. Um, you you said you particularly liked the, um... the. There's a scene in it in the mall towards the end where he has to slide down this pole. The amount of preparation and effort that went into filming that they had about fifteen different cameras all positioned around this pole, mm. and they only had one opportunity to film the shot because obviously the mall needed to get everything ready to reopen the following day for the customers as well. And not only that, he did not come out of that uninjured either. You know, he was really quite severely injured. Uh, he had third degree burns from hanging onto the pole because the pole had been under hot studio lights, so burns on his hands. He had a concussion from it. Pretty sure he had a rib injury as well from how hard he landed. Yeah, he really puts 110% into everything that he does with these and uh, and the dedications there. Um, absolutely adore this film. Mm. Uh, really, really adore it. It's just uh, a classic and... Uh, it's it's one that I, I thoroughly enjoy watching. This will be uh, probably the second or third time I've watched this in the last twelve months. To be fair, and mm. absolutely adore it. Um, yeah, just 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 fantastic yeah. stuff. Really, I, I, I can't uh, I can't say any more. Uh, yeah. The cast are fantastic. Um, Stories cray. You know, you you really despise the villains in it. Uh, it balances the action with the comedy. Uh, I don't think this one's meant to be too comedic, but there are a few moments in it where he's like he's juggling the phone and uh, you know he's, 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 he's on the hot desk. So he gets demoted and he gets put on the hot desk in the police station. And he's you know he's trying to talk to a vicar on one. Somebody's been assaulted on another line and a missing persons and 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 just try to, and, and then his girlfriend rings and it's just you know like unorganized chaos sort of thing. And yeah, and and bless him, his poor girlfriend is it? She called May. Yeah, May. Yeah. And um, you know she she always turns up and gets the wrong end of the stick about what's going on. And then Jackie Chan's having to try and explain himself and. And she all she does is run away and sort of cry, and then lets him explain later. But and that becomes a running running gag through the the early films in the series, at least. Anyway, 
Um, I'm going to give this one an 8.5 out of 10. Mm, uh, I'm going to go 9. This is my highest one, I think, so far. I absolutely love this film. Everything that happens in it is to perfection. You've got the stunts in it, the pole. There's the scene at the beginning where um, you've got the car chase going down the hill. That yeah, driving through the village brilliant. and they destroy all the all the huts and the houses yeah. and everything. And... and the fact that Jackie Chan sings the theme. I mean, he's sung the theme before, but in this one, it sounds brilliant. Yeah, well, this, this, is the fir- this, this is the first time he sung it because this is the first one in the series, yeah. but it's... Uh, it, yeah. it comes back, I think, in the second one, and only one of the reboots he did uh, as well. He uh, he does a, does another go at it as well. Mm. But anyway, yeah. So it's an eight and a half from me and a nine from Laura. Like I said earlier, we're rounding up this evening um, with another police story film. Um, my favourite of the series has always been number three, Super Cop. Although I do obviously have a soft spot for the one we've just watched. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna watch Super Cop. So we are back after um, after our last film, which was Police Story Three: Super Cop. So next day, we were both absolutely shattered last night and thought that we'd do the vlog for you today. Uh, we've got one more film to do after this, but anyway, Police Story Three follows Jackie Chan being assigned to work with Chinese police force to go undercover in a prison camp and escape uh, alongside another inmate who, in the uh, in the UK dub at least, is called Panther. Uh, Panther's part of a gang that's selling arms. And, and has got all sorts of evil and dodgy things going on. Jackie Chan obviously goes undercover as Fu Sheng and uh, sort of infiltrates the gang and gets gets them all sort of on side and and sort of works his way in from the from the ground up to become an integral member of the group. Once they've escaped from prison and he's aided by uh, the Chinese agent Michelle Yeoh, who goes undercover as his sister. The two of them, like I said, infiltrate the gang. And it gets to a third act uh, where obviously uh, it's revealed that they're undercover cops and sort of all hell ensues really. Uh, this this film's just great fun and uh, I really, really enjoyed it. The stunt work again and the choreography behind it is fantastic. This is the first one in this particular police story series to not be directed by um, Jackie Chan. Uh, director Stanley Tong takes over who sometimes doubles for Jackie Chan. Uh, in some of the stunts as well uh, and they are quite frequent collaborators I don't know if this was one of the first collaborations they did um, but it, it certainly manages to maintain the feel of the of the first two police story films uh, and bring that over whilst also being sort of fresh and a bit revitalised because I think by the time this one had come out there maybe been, I don't know, five or six years between them and sort of it was a, almost a, a reboot as well as a sequel if that sort of makes sense the only mm. returning characters besides Jackie himself are um, Uncle Bill as the um, as obviously the chief inspector and then May the girlfriend as well um, both of them only really have sort of small parts in it, May plays a bit more of a bigger part in the in the climax of the film and, and Uncle Bill's basically just there to, to give the mission out at the start of the film uh, the interplay between Michelle Yeoh and Jackie Chan is really good and both of their uh, martial arts work and stunt work is fantastic uh, in the film, the action, the comedy's balanced really well. I right enjoyed it. This has always been one of my favourite Jackie Chan films, mm. and I've really, really enjoyed it as part of this again. What do you think, Sweet? Yeah, I liked this one. You know, going on what you were saying about the stunts, I think this one for me really stands out because of the stunt work. There's a scene in it where he jumps uh, sort of underneath the helicopter and sort of has to hang on to this rope ladder, and he's taken right over the city he's slammed into billboards and things like that and he ends up hanging on this pipe on this railroad track the helicopter crash lands on this train and it's coming by and obviously it won't be Jackie Chan film unless he's injured <laughs> he ends up this helicopter whizzes by in one of the outtakes and slams into his shoulder and oh the injuries he received from that oh broken fractured ribs fractured shoulder bone torn tendons in his shoulder he was in agony the worst part is he's hanging there until the crew can get him down, he's hanging there in agony until the crew cut him Absolutely. down. Absolutely. Well, the outtakes are often put up for laughs, but uh, mm. like I said earlier, he got the idea after he worked as a as a bit part player on Cannonball Run with uh, Burt Reynolds and Roger Moore, uh, and obviously they have uh, some outtakes in the uh, the end of the film, and that's where he sort of got the idea from, mm. and that's why he does it on pretty much most of his films. But it just actually goes to show the level of effort he puts yeah. into all his stunts yeah, and. He really uh, does. He's- you know, just stars. how much he's uh, he's willing to, to risk for uh, just for a perfect if shot. He, if he does not feel that it's a good shot, he will do it again. There's another film where he constantly risks setting himself on fire because he's not happy with the shots. <laughs> 
it's it's unbelievable the amount of work he puts in. Absolutely. Well, I right enjoyed that, and I'm going to give it an eight out of ten. I'm going to give it an eight as well. Very good. So the last film of our marathon we're going to stick on in a minute is a very recent effort. It's like I say, it's exclusive to Netflix here in the UK, uh, but being a bit of a physical media collector hoarder. Um, I wanted I wanted it on disc and found that it was readily available in Poland, so I imported the the Polish copy of uh, the Foreigner, starring obviously Pierce Brosnan alongside Jackie Chan. I'm really looking forward to watching this one again. So we've reached the end and we've just watched the Foreigner. You might um, recall in the uh, either the earlier part of this video or the first part of it. I've still not decided whether it's going to be a parts one and two. Or whether it's going to be a like an hour-long thing, probably a parts one and two. Anyway, earlier on, uh, I mentioned that I had to pick this up uh, on Amazon and import it from Poland, uh, as it's exclusive to Netflix here in the UK, and I quite like my physical media, so I uh, obviously uh, picked it up that way. So the foreigner, uh, Jackie Chan, stars as Quan, uh, whose daughter is killed in an IRA bombing in, in London. She's got to pick up a dress for a prom and the bomb goes off in a nearby bank and uh, unfortunately kills her. All Jackie Chan wants is the names of who's responsible so that he can exact revenge and uh, approaches um, a minister in Northern Ireland, Liam Hennessy, played by Pierce Brosnan for those names. Brosnan initially uh, suggests that he knows nothing about it and uh, that uh, as soon as he knows anything, you know, the, the appropriate action will be taken to bring the bombers to justice. Jackie Chan doesn't believe or accepts this and sets out on his own sort of almost Taken style um, revenge mission really. And uh, it's, um, it's a much more serious role for Jackie Chan. We just spent the last two days watching him play really, really sort of like comedic characters or, you know, sort of bit tongue-in-cheek sort of even in the more serious films that we've watched but this is completely deadpan action thriller uh, really emotive at points you really really feel for this guy he's lost his uh, his only daughter his, his, his other daughters and his wife had died in a uh, another time in his life so this this young girl's the only family that he's got and he's you know he's, he's grieving really hard um, as well as that the sort of political interplay between Pierce Brosnan's characters and the other uh, sort of government members um, that you know have previous ties to the IRA as well that's a whole interesting sort of little backstory as well and it's sort of a very much a game of sort of Pierce Brosnan thinking that he's he can outsmart Jackie Chan's character and that he's just you know uh, he's, he's just you know one man what can one man do sort of thing and uh, he's ultimately uh, proven wrong and it's just a really really good good film directed by Martin Campbell as well who uh, directed Goldeneye uh, with Pierce Brosnan and obviously the fantastic Casino Royale as well um, so you know the direction was in fantastic hands the stunt work in this it's, uh, it's not as um, apparent as it is in some of Jackie Chan's other films obviously he's uh, older in this one and so he's not able to do as much but what he does is still absolutely fantastic mm. there's a there's a scene in uh, in a guest house where he's staying and the um sort of the heavies for uh, Pierce Brosnan's character find him and sort of intend to go and rough him up and he, he sort of he doesn't run rings around them like he used to do in his younger films you know it, it plays to the fact that he's an older bloke but he still manages to uh, sort of get away and put a good show in mm. what did you Definitely. think sweet Oh, this film tugs at my heartstrings. It really does. He does a very good job of playing a very sad, grieving father who's lost his daughter. My heart breaks for him in this film. It really, truly does. But what it does really well is he sort of transitions from grieving man to vengeful man who wants revenge for those who have killed his daughter. He does that really well. And he sets all those traps up in little bits. And he, he does it like, like it's... Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like Absolutely. Well, there's a scene where he's at the uh, the office of Pierce Brosnan's character, and he makes he sets a homemade bomb up, and um, you know it, it's a couple of little uh, little glass bottles that have had you know a soft drink in at some point, and you know a few match heads and a packet of cigarettes, and there'll be a bit more to it than that. But the the sort of uh, the ingenuity of it is really really clever, and it sort of shows you in that one scene that this guy is not somebody to be messed with. Mm. Um, a re really, really strong film to, to end the marathon on. Um, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. I'm giving it an 8. Well, there we go. So that, folks, has been our Jackie Chan movie marathon. Um, we took that, obviously, uh, this Easter weekend. 
And uh, yeah, as always, if you've liked the video, leave a comment, drop us a like. If you're interested in seeing more about what I'm up to on the channel uh, and occasionally joined by Laura, please hit that subscribe button. And thank you very much for watching. Stay safe and well and take care of yourself. You knock off James Bond, Ethan Hunt, um, Jake, not Jason Bond, but you know, insert super spy. Um, <laughs> I've done it again. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>